Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed watched Venus Brown disappearing along the wooded drive in front of Brigadier Whitehead's house. He got out of his car. There was a sudden burst of machine gun fire. Steed dived for the shrubbery. The enemy was still advancing. And that... Steed picked himself up and advanced towards the house. There was a sudden familiar roar growing in intensity. A light flashed in Steve's eyes. He placed an arm protectively over his face. The sound grew. And then... The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on a general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Since mm -hmm. then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. OMO cleans best. To keep your complexion soft and smooth, choose Lux with its creamy, moisturizing lather and precious perfume. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel become even more deeply involved in activities from outer space and wonder how much of this strange phenomenon comes from Venus with love. John Steed had decided to take a more active part in affairs since becoming a member of the British Venusian Society. Whether this was because he felt Mrs. Peel's activities had been too feeble to prevent more sudden deaths, he didn't say. If he had such thoughts, he was wise enough to keep them to himself. Mrs. Peel suggested that he sought out Brigadier Whitehead, the last person on their possible murder list himself. Steed did so, and arrived, it seemed, like Mrs. Peel was wont to do, a trifle too late. Steed stared at the house. All was now quiet. He made his way through the shrubbery. He was nearly at the French windows that led into Whitehead's study when he stopped, froze in his tracks. A car was coming up the driveway. Had Venus Brown returned? Shouldn't think so. The sound of that engine was vaguely familiar. So are those footsteps. Hello there, Mrs. Peel. Oh, oh, oh see, you gave me quite a fright. Nothing to what you would have had if you'd been here a few minutes ago. Oh? Brigadier Whitehead? Was making a devil of a lot of noise. Sounded as though he was playing war games. It culminated in a horrible scream. He is now strangely quiet. Even deathly quiet. Come on, let's wait. A few moments later, they were both standing over the brigadier's body. Everything on this patch of carpet has been bleached white. Look, Steve, even the gramophone record he must have been holding. Hmm. Gramophone records, tape machines. 
This is what he must have been doing. There were all the sound effects I heard coming from this window. Steed, look, that tape recorder over there in the corner. That seems to have escaped all the trouble. It's, it's still turning. Yes, so it is. Steed walked over and switched it off. It stopped. He pressed the rewind button. It whirled at a fast speed. He then pressed the forward play button and the playback button. Hmm. And if we knew what that looked like, we might know the answer. Some while after this, Steed and Mrs. Peel made their way back to the British Venusian Society's offices. This was all new to Mrs. Peel. She accepted Steed's briefing before entering the building. You know what you have to do, Mrs. Peel? Mm hmm. Play the tapes over to Venus Brown and any other interested member and watch their reaction. If there appears to be any suspicious signs, stick close to Venus and not let her out of my sight. Yes, I think that's what I would do. Yes, I bet you would. Well, I, I can't go in there. They know me now. Mm, only too well. well. Where will you be, Steve? I'm going back to that eccentric Dr. Trimble. He's the only one I know who might be able, inadvertently, to throw more light on this. I wish you wouldn't use phrases like throwing more light. I've had more than enough. I'll ring you, Steve. Goodbye. Mrs. Peel, as good as her word, managed to get an appointment to see Venus Brown and played her the tape. When it was over and merciful silence reigned, Venus Brown said, Where did you get this from, Mrs. Peel? I worked for a newspaper. It was brought to my editor by a close associate. And why on earth were you asked to take an interest? Oh, they put me on all sorts of crazy interviews. I was also handed these photographs. It was suggested by our science correspondent that Earth was being invaded. Invaded? Hmm, by creatures from the planet Venus, of all places. Hmm. Photographs can be faked, you know. Oh, I know. You're an expert in the field. I beg your pardon. Oh, not a faking photograph. I'm sure you've never had any need. Thank you. I meant an expert in the planet Venus. You're the secretary here, after all. Tell me, what's your view? Well, they are interesting, of course, very interesting. But I wouldn't like to hazard a guess without a second opinion. I'll call our Mr. Crawford. He's our expert in radio astronomy. That uh, tape is far more in his line. Excuse me. Venus Brown stretched out an elegant hand with long, silvered nails and picked up a white telephone. Find Crawford for me and ask him to ring me immediately, please. Phew. So hot in here. Do you mind if we have the window open? Without waiting for a reply, Venus moved to the window, opened it, and drew apart the lace curtains. She turned and slipped off the jacket of her suit, hanging it with studied carelessness over the shoulders of a Venus de Milo model that stood on a plinth in the bay of the window. The telephone rang. Hello? Venus. Crawford, do you want me? Yes. I have a lady reporter here. She has a most interesting tape recording. I want you to hear it. I can't get away right now. Things to do. And try to listen to it over the phone. Do you mind, Mrs. Peel? No, not at all. Mrs. Peel started the tape recording from the beginning. Venus held the earpiece of the phone near the speaker and waited. Eventually... I can't tell over the phone. I'll get over to you as soon as I can. Oh, very tiresome. All right. He says he can't... What the devil? The window. The curtains are aflame. And look at my Venus. The curtains indeed were aflame, and the model of the Venus de Milo was shattered into pieces. The lovely jacket had disintegrated. Mrs. Peel flew to the window, bounded through, and stared out from the smoldering balcony. In the distance, beyond a tall avenue of poplar trees, was the glistening reflection of some sort of vehicle travelling at speed. Missed it again, Mrs. Peel. Steed had found Primple in his surgery and explained a few of the difficulties. You say five of our members, Steed? 
Hadley, Cosgrove, Mansford. Smith and Brigadier Whitehead. And according to the message just received from the society's officers, an attack upon Miss Brown. You, uh, you've seen the bodies of these men? Mm. <laughs> Appears they died of shock. Hair and clothes bleached white by some intense light. Ah, then I was right. The Venusians are here. Well, nothing's been reported from any of the country's defenses. Radar control has picked nothing up. But if, as I've expounded, these beings are composed of gas, then they'd never be detected. They could travel through our atmosphere in a completely different way. They could travel with the speed of light itself. Using some kind of extraterrestrial vehicle? An unidentified object? Possibly. Yes. Well, thank you for your opinions, Dr. Trimble. I must go now. See, I'm on duty at Cosgrove Observatory tonight, and uh, with things heating up like this, well, I just don't want to miss a thing. Bye. In Cosgrove's observatory, sometime later, the phone rang. Yes, Mrs. Peel? Your confidence in my ability to phone is touching. Of course. I'm all set up here. Any luck with the tape? No, not yet. We're expecting Crawford. He's certainly taking his time. But don't worry, I shan't let Venus out of my sight. Mm, I've got her on my lens here, too. I'll bet you have. Just don't be sitting in that chair. They say lightning never strikes twice in the same place, but I wouldn't back on that. I'm not. Um, I've got a friend to help me. He must be mad. Well, he's not. He's a bit of a stuffed shirt, though, aren't you, old chap? I'll bet he not really. He can't hear very well. Uh, stay with it, Mrs. Peel. I've always been with it, Steed. Goodbye. Bye. Steed replaced the receiver and moved to the telescope. Be watchful, alert, and don't just sit there like a dummy. Steed pushed the head of the figure until its right eye was under the lens. It was a tailor's dummy. But in the half-light, it looked rather like Steed. Not got my panache, though. Steed picked up a cold drink and retired behind some rather large filing cabinets. Star eyes that to me is what your eyes are. He didn't have long to wait. After a few minutes, reaching out for his drink, he dropped it as the heat from the glass blistered his fingers. The devil heated that up. Steed crouched behind the cabinet, clutched his ears and closed his eyes tightly as the sound and the brightness that flooded the observatory reached its peak. After the explosion, the darkness descended again and there was silence. Steed crawled out of hiding and rushed forward. The tailor's dummy in the swivel chair drooped over. Its face was a distorted mass of melted wax, all snowy white. It slowly collapsed onto the floor. The door burst open. Steed! Steed! Did you see that? Dr. Primble stood in the doorway. See what, Dr. Primble? That flash of light. It came from down below. I saw it. It came from the cemetery. They've arrived, Steed. The Venusians, they've arrived. They've landed. They're here. They've taken over the cemetery. You got trouble, Steed. Dead or alive, you've still got them. With a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I wash the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on. It's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful. 
and be proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.